Hello, this is Elaine with Antelope Beads, and today I'm going to present some simple veil techniques. The very easiest is to use a tear cast finish veil, and then I can attach some beads using a head pin. So I will take a head pin, I'll put on a tear cast spacer, a Kazuri bead, another spacer, and then I'm going to trim the head pin off to about three-eighths of an inch, okay. and then I'll use my looping pliers to make a simple loop at the top. I set the top of the head pin in, just flush to the top of the pliers, roll it around, and then I'll come back and straighten it up the other way. We do have a video that extensively covers simple loops. If this is a new technique for you, you might want to take some time and review that video. So then I'll have some chain nose pliers. I will open up the loop I just made, attach the bail, and then close that loop up again. And then I have a bail that is ready to string on a piece of leather or chain. And that's our very easiest technique. Another technique that's really useful is a what we call a briolette wrap. And this is used for beads and pendants that are top drilled. Uh, this one has a hole that goes from front to back. And this trumpetta bead has a hole that goes from side to side. This technique is, is equally applicable to both of these beads. So to start, I'll have a piece of 16, excuse me, 18 gauge wire. I want the wire to be proportional to the bead. I don't want it to be too small you know, or too big so that it overpowers the bead. So I'm using an 18 gauge antique copper wire. I will string the trumpetta bead on the wire and then I will fold it up on each side. And then I'm gonna fold it over the top There we go. So it looks like that. And then I'm going to use my fingernail or a pair of pliers. I'm going to take one side and just bend it down where the two wires cross. And then I'll take the other wire and I'm going to bend it straight up so I have a right angle right in here. Then I'm going to form a loop with the longer wire. Again, I'll use my looping pliers and I can adjust the size of the loop depending on what I'm going to string this pendant on. And I think this will just about do it for me. So in this particular case, I'm just going to squeeze it, the pliers shut, and that will start the loop. Then I'm going to take the front and just bend it forward. I'm going to continue to rotate this around the back. Now I've got something that looks like this but I really want this piece to be flush with the part that's pointing up there. So I will put the pliers back in and I will put the edge of the pliers right at the point where my loop started and bend that around and then I can pull this wire out and I've got a loop that comes up, out, around and then down again. The next step is to take the piece that's running horizontal and wrap it around this two pieces that are next to the loop. And I will just hold this and wrap it a couple of times. I've got something like this. I can trim off my ends and there we go. And then I, the, my last two steps, one is to make sure that my bail is pointing front to back in this case so I can run a cord through it. If I wanted a pair of earrings, I'd actually put that loop facing forward so that I can attach my ear wire. But I do want a pendant, so I'll go ahead and reorient that. And then I will just take my chain nose pliers 
and press in the ends of the wire so it looks neat and it doesn't scratch anyone. And there is my finished bale. I hope you've enjoyed watching this. Please see Antelope Beads for more videos.